let us start. I will briefly go through the sutta what we have done because there has been a break. So we are discussing the later portions. The akhiri portion hai uska, usko discuss kar rahe. And first uh, subsection. These subsections are made by Bhikkhu uh, Bodhi and uh, Ajahn Sujato. So it's not that they had titles are given in the sutta. So the set of teachings where he gives about various sects, aspects of self, this is what we have discussed and this is also done in a uh, manner so as to create its linkage with the Paticca Samutpal. And the various concepts of self have arisen because of non-understanding of Paticca Samutpal. And then the states, we discuss these two statements about contact and the interaction of contact and mentality. And we found that these these enigmatic sense, so-called sentences, they distinguish between what is reality and what is concept. And that itself acts as a um, critique of the various theories of self. And then this, this sec section where he talks about the, this is the last section of the previous, uh, last sen uh, sentence of the previous sections. I am relating the cycle of birth and death, the extent of wisdom, and uh, the um, methods of naming, it leads all of them to the mentality, materiality, together with consciousness, which means, which is mentality, materiality, and interacting with the consciousness. So they should be seen in that manner. So having discussed this and firstly refuted the whole concept itself, still he goes through the various uh, discussions about self and points out here in this case, various they, why they themselves, what are the shortcomings in those descriptions. One he takes with respect to form, various possibilities, and then he sees that the what is their future destiny? There are again various possibilities are shown, as in the Brahma Jala Sutta. <clears throat> and then the how these considerations, how we, what exactly are the discussions which with the elements of five khandas which are taken as the basis and analyzed in various ways. And he gives refutation for each type of field, the each of these possibilities, that feeling is myself, and it is not concerned with the self, and myself is not the feeling, but one which knows the feeling. So this is what we have discussed till now. And as you would see, the uh, then the last thing here is non-description of self, which meant, what does Buddha's disciple do, one who has really uh, broken through, and was free from the he will naturally be free from all descriptions of that kind because he doesn't consider any of the khanda as self. And so because of that, he's not clinging to any of the khandas, and not clinging, he is in a position to attain the nibbana in the first final stage. Now this uh, one sex small part which I had not been able to cover in the last time was that these people who have got the complete freedom would never be getting involved in the questions like this about Tathagata, whether he exists after death or does not exist or both exist or doesn't exist or neither exist. No, these are the typical quadrema which used to be used in Indian logic at that time to put down various philosophies. And the Buddha points out here that a person who 
is this the person about him is talking now give not giving any description of self that is he doesn't talk about self in any way because he sees the whole process nature of the paticca samutpad so once this is the case then he will never get involved in this sort of a questioning because all these four sects presume that tathagata exists as a self otherwise there is no question of any of these questions the the conclusion drawn from it is against which we have been talking as our manifestation being a manifestation of a process scientists have found some different chemical reactions uh, where if the the chemical certain specific chemicals which are partly organic partly inorganic are added in a vessel then the reactions take place and they give the there's a, uh, a lump of matter or matter like looking substance created there and it keeps on expanding and then shrinking then expanding and then shrinking so that that experiment i see as a great method of visualizing how the process happens and how the process can give rise to manifestation of a form which is happening in all these realms that the processes of stream of the flow of um, consciousness the stream of consciousness is getting manifested as a form which changes changes and then ex- gets extinguished and then it again arises again and gets extinguished so i'm just citing that uh, which are which can be a illustration of how a process can manif- create a manifestation of a form so having discussed the various aspects of uh, uh, what have, have, have is the understanding of a person who is liberated fully through the proper penetration into dependent origination and has given up the notion of self then further buddha talks about in subsequent uh, portions of the sutta in way, different another set of ways about what is a liberated one what exactly does uh, what are the categories of liberated one you know a question which is uh, which keeps on coming up where its times in various suttas in terms of cheto vimutti and panya vimutti here then this this classification is not the same as that i'm just saying it to the outset it's a classification of a different kind because those two are essentially the approaches of attaining the arhantship there there's not uh, there's some similarity but not exactly what is being said here so he discusses that there are two types of liberated ones one is called panya vimutta another is called avato bhaga vimutta avato meaning in two ways one who is liberated in both the ways which essentially means liberated through wisdom and very specifically it is mentioned mastery over the immaterial jhanas so the one who is and he says this is the highest type of arahant highest type of liberated being who has got the wisdom and mastery over the immaterial jhanas and again liberated by wisdom is also defined in a rather non conventional way uh, we normally talk of uh, having uh, uh, completed or fully realized the eightfold path a one who has got uh, liberated through the sequence as was being discussed the other day through understanding the uh, that five khandas are not me not myself and uh, not mine and therefore he gets uh, nibbita he gets disenchanted towards them and then it leads to dispassion and that leads to liberation here that is not the approach which is followed you know you, you can see how buddha mehras he is teaching ananda the complexities and various aspects here he says uh, understanding of different realms of existence in five different ways these are the ways are the ones which we have 
been discussing number of times that is the origin cessation gratification drawback and escape samuday um, bahan asad adina nisaran so he says one who understand the realm in these five different ways abdicates clinging and is liberated so he is not mentioning the clinging to the existence and existence in various realms so if that is given up which is the padan uh, towards the various bhava because we know in pratichya samutpad we have tanha pachya upadan upadan pachya bhava bhava pachya jati so if the person has a clarity about the various realms of existence and he is able to give up either through direct experience or through partial experience and then carrying forward that knowledge into the whole domain then he is said to be fully liberated so this is a different again a non conventional way of understanding what the panya vimutti is or what the concepts of panya can be so and the he and as if this was not enough of a diversion these 31 realms which we have studied till now they are also divided into seven stations of consciousness and two bases and this may what does it mean seven stations of consciousness there are supposed to be 31 realms now you would recall that the distinctions between various uh realms the higher realms are based on intensity of the jhanas no so he is just clubbing them all together and thus coming to the seven stations of consciousness and two is calling bases because in those realms consciousness is not either not there at all or it's not functioning to a, any uh, extent which with, with there's a doubt you know neva sanya and asanya neither perception nor non perception so that also is called a base and the other base is asanni in which there is no sanya we remember there was a plane of that kind so this five ways of reflection will come to come later again so we'll see what are the stations of seven stations of consciousness and two bases and is being down to very funny aspect which is which may seem very funny and strange to us so what what is the manner on which he is being distinguishing he is distinguishing on the basis of the nature of their body and the nature of the perception now you can see the the importance of this kind of uh, classification that the physical the realms in which there are physical bodies most of the realms are like that whether they are gross or fine material the physical bodies can are in some domain they are diverse different physical bodies in other cases there are similar physical bodies and then there is the issue of perception how what do they perceive in some realms they perceive happiness and unhappiness in some realms they perceive bliss of a particular kind and it of a next kind and the next kind so on that basis the distinction is done so you can see with these uh, curly brackets how the all uh, of the various fine material realms are combined together into one category so that 31 realms of existence what we had called 31 realms they are actually uh, subdivided into seven planes of consciousness seven stages stations of consciousness and two bases so it's now what is the first station of consciousness it is beings diverse in body and diverse in perception typical is we as human beings we have diverse bodies and our perceptions are different some i perceive happiness experience happiness sometimes they experience we all of us experience sometimes happiness sometimes unhappiness so we have that kind of things and the sense sphere gods are also seen to be of the same kind 
and the sum of the beings in the lower worlds you know the uh, uh, so the this is the first station of consciousness which falls then second station is diverse in body but identical in perception now what are the diverse in body uh, the great brahma and his retinue they are slightly different they are fine material but slightly different distinguishable their bodies are distinguishable but their perception is all based on first jhana so he he puts them all and clubs them all in one category that their perception is identical and interestingly bhikkhu bodhi also points out that the second station of consciousness actually includes the extremely low realms the many titans the asuras and the petas and the animal realm and the hells why there also the beings have diverse bodies but perception is of similar kind is absolute misery all of them experience absolute misery only degree may be different but the perception is identical so this is also a very the bhikkhu bodhi put as a second stage of station of consciousness so you can see the differences it creates then the third is being identical in body and diverse in perception these are the the beings which have gone through the second jhanas so they are gods of streaming radiance immediable radiance limited radiance as you can see all of them are radiant people you can't distinguish between them only in terms of maybe the intensity of radiation being slightly different so he puts them all in identical in body but their perceptions are different because they have the the, the extent of uh, jhanas are sub substantially different so there is here there is a they are put in different categories it's not pretty absolutely clear why is this being done that they are said different diverse in perception we can only make a guess about it then the third is the the sec uh, next section is the fourth station of consciousness we have identical in body identical in perception these are the refulgent you know gl glorious beings who experience uh the third jhana which is which has a same flavor because it's a, the neither preeti nor sukha are there and there is essentially uh, this is, uh, the element of sukha and the uh, ekagrata and moving towards equanimity then the fourth jhana people is interestingly he doesn't include them except the non percipient being for example the pure abodes it doesn't include in that because it is not possible for any being to enter into that unless he is already anagami most probably that's the reason so he excludes them from stations of consciousness because they are not accessible to everybody so the only the case is the four the non percipient beings you know and he calls them as base only because there is no consciousness It's only a form, so therefore he calls it the base only. It's not a full-fledged station of consciousness in that sense because consciousness is not there. Then he goes through the it defines in terms of the immaterial realm, and of course they are dis totally distinct. There is no body. Perceptions are obviously different, so he puts them in a, another category without calling in any way body or perception. call them immaterial jhana attainments so there is first immaterial attainment infinite space then infinite consciousness and base of nothingness then the next is neither perception nor perce uh, neither uh, perception nor non perception so this he terms again as a base in the sense that the consciousness is has a is probably present in a very very limited vanner and therefore it can't be called as a station consciousness and is termed as base only so in this way the 31 planes are divided into seven stations of consciousness and two bases and what is the um, arhant in that domain doing 
So, what are the five ways of reflection? The there again we can see how interaction with Pratishya Samutpad is incorporated. We talk of origin and cessation, and the Kubodi has written ending, so I also wrote the same. Now, the uh, how does one really I, I understand thoroughly the uh, cause of Samudaya and the Pahana? Or the Athangamam, it's called Samudaya and the Athangamam. That's why probably ending has been used. So the mention is that Patichya Samutpad is the really explains fully the origin and this cessation of being. So one who has mastered Patichya Samutpad, then he understands this origin and ending thoroughly. And then the gratification, drawback, and escape, this he calls as uh, this commentary term as a, these are the commentarial point aspects which are quite uh, uh, insightful, that these can be seen as realization of the four noble truths. How? The gratification is seen as the craving, craving for pleasure, uh, the pleasant feelings of various kinds. So this he says is craving is seen as second noble truth, you know, as cause of suffering. So the Dukkha uh, Samadaya, Arya Satcham. And then interestingly, the drawback or Adinava is seen as the first noble truth because first noble truth is Dukkha Arya Satcham and drawback is Dukkha, the suffering involved in the asada, in the gratification, what is the suffering inbuilt into that? And five, fifth, the escape part is related to two of the remaining uh, noble truths. First is the cessation, that is third noble truth, which gives the experience of the Dukkha uh, Nirodha Arya and then the method of doing it, that is the fourth Dukkha Nirodha Patingamini Patipada Arya Satcham. So, fourth noble truth, fourth noble truth also, that is the eightfold path. So, one who has mastered all of them and come through uh, proper practice, then he is called the one who is liberated by wisdom. So, you can see ultimately, although the association is related, is made with the five the planes of existence. But those planes of existence have to be reflected upon in this manner so that the clinging for the existence in those realms, especially the higher realms, is, is abdicated. And I, I can uh, visualize why is this being done. This is being done to point out that in the full revelation, there is, in the uh, in Anagami, Still, there remains Rupa Raga, Rupa Raga, and the other three aspects of um, slight agitation and some doubt and the avijja, very subtle form of avijja. So, since Rupa Raga and Rupa Raga are forms of craving, not and they are also uh, have to be abdicated; they have to be given up. For that purpose, I think this is being mentioned because Rupa and Arupa are various planes of existence. So in that manner, we can understand why this kind of uh, classification is done and why we are asked to, uh, told that this also is important. Okay? That, now, the question arises, what will Arhant do about, uh, what will Panya Vimutta do who doesn't have immaterial uh, attainments that and uh, this is the base original statement from the sutta uh, ananda when a bhikkhu having understood as they really are origin passing away satisfaction unsatisfactoriness and escape that is the five aspects regard to the seven stations of consciousness and two bases then he is said to be liberated through non clinging then he is called a bhikkhu liberated by wisdom. You can see in all the domains, the clinging for those domains has is given up and therefore it's called liberated through non-clinging. And we know the 
main reason for round of birth and death is the clinging aspect. So then the question arises that she, since uh, Arhant uh, doesn't have mastery of immaterial jhanas, he, one cannot directly contemplate these planes. His knowledge is therefore inductive. Inductive means by direct insight, she can contemplate the phenomena included in the direct experience of the realm in which the person is. So we're talking of human beings. In this, they can understand the completely the limitations of this realm and in five ways analyze it and get through the attachment to this realm. And there may be various other realms also which he can accept because he mean it's, it's only talking about immaterial jhanas. So an Arant may have jhana, first or second or third jhanas experienced while he is in the um, human realm. And then he, he can directly access the the those states of consciousness and give up the attachment to them. And then by having seen that these are the this is the nature of um, Rupa Raga and Kama Raga, then one in, induces, you know, one deducts that, yeah, this must be, this, this also is generally true of all other realms. So by induction, she understands that the five aspects extend to all other realms. This is how it is explained in the commentaries, how the Panyavimutta is there, uh, has a complete liberation from all types of clinging. Because even though he, one has not experienced the immaterial jhanas, one can develop the uh, clinging through them by proper understanding. Even if, uh, obviously, the realms which I have mentioned, which he can access based on her level of jhana, maybe the person has no level of jhana to start with. Then, by can, one can still see that in the realm in which I am existing, this is the characteristic and the then, then, then generalize this that in all realms, because all realms are leading to rebirth, we understand Paticca Samutpa that the rebirth is going to be always there and therefore he concludes that yeah, these are also like that and gives up the uh, clinging to them by proper contemplation. <coughs> Now, I think since the small thing is left, I'll complete the whole thing. Uh, is it okay, Bhantaj? You've gone a bit. We'll take another eight, seven, eight, ten minutes to so complete this whole sutta. Then the Ubato Bhaga Vimutta is one who is liberated by two means. And this is the statement from the sutta. When a bhikkhu attains these eight liberations, eight emancipations in forward order, in reverse order, and in both forward and reverse order, when he attains them and emerges from them whenever he mounts, in whatever way he wants, and for as long as he wants, and when through the destruction of cankers, and when through the and this end should have been strengthened, and he here and now enters and dwells in the cankerless liberation of mind, liberated by wisdom, having realized for himself the direct knowledge, then he is called a bhikkhu, liberated in both ways. And then a very strong statement is made. And Ananda, there is no other liberation in both ways, higher or more sublime than this one. So this is put as the highest possible attainment for any being in terms of the Buddha's teachings, that you can get complete liberation and complete mastery over the immaterial jhanas. And what is this eight emancipations? They are again the uh, successive attainment of four jhanas, which is uh, implicit in the meditation. In that case, it is not mentioned four jhanas in the sutta, but what is mentioned is various kinds of kamathanas which people can take. And then in the commentaries, these are related to the various experiences of jhanas. So here he has four jhanas plus four immaterial attainments. And then the cessation of perception and feelings is also is the last one which liberates him fully. So this is the completion of this sutta now. So we can stop here.
and reflect on it for some time or if there are some questions already i can try to answer them to the extent i understand this so maybe self tak to we were okay um, but why it took a digression into this ye shayad aap agar summarize kar de to shayad thodi madad ho because the section on self you see ends with liberated one no non description of self Buddha's disciples confined only to experiential realities, and so free from all description, this opens the door to liberation. And the quotation from the Sutta also shows shares the same thing, that when he doesn't consider any of the khandas, let me put use that word, as myself, as mine or um, me, then he does not cling to anything. and he is personally attains nibbana no clings to anything what what is the, what are the kinds of clinging where exactly one gets stuck for that purpose probably this descriptions of the liberated one are given because here this is not mentioned about the gradation two gradations of the liberated ones in fact there could be um, we could put my greater gradations in terms of which which immaterial jhana one has attained one may not be able to attain all of them in one go so they will be different gradations of the liberated ones so while he is mentioning here he is not returning to state of being that is true of all of them they once you have abandoned clinging but to for two purposes to show where exactly is the biggest clinging the bhava bhava means you know, we have padan pachya bhava so bhava means existence and existence in bhava can be with respect to various realms so to explain them this uh, additional information is being put about the liberated one that liberated ones themselves can be of different kinds you know kinds in the sense uh, quote and quote kinds i have no other word for them one who is liberated by panya other has the same level of panya but also in addition he has the immaterial jhana he has mastery over immaterial jhana as you can see from the sutta station he as if you read this it gives a really the picture of the extent of mastery over the jhanas the person has and this is found in uh, incidentally in the um, other many other suttas about this uh, eight emancipations and the if you we all recall in the brahm in the mahaparinibbana sutta when buddha is going through mahaparinibbana he actually does this goes in the forward order reverse order then again uh, starts from the base and then goes up to the fourth jhana and and leaves the the body uh, the consciousness is finished so this is the this in a way He is trying to explain the highest level of attainment that a human being can have. So, which is uh, in a way uh, not just panya vimutta, but something more than that is seen to be a a, a greater attainment. So, I think, and this is in a way continuation of the last uh, uh, discussion in the. Uh, earlier portion about non descriptions of the self where he is taking now because self and all are uh, all the domain of worldlings were confused so he is now telling what is the domain of liberated ones and there he goes into full detail about the possibilities of uh, the extent of attainments that liberated ones can have that's how i understand it so non description of self hai introduction to the liberated one that a liberated one will never describe self because it was related to the previous aspect previous length of the sutta where he 
talks of descriptions of self and signal the various kinds of you know uh, significance of the what are the uh, places where the self can be created we took feelings and their form similarly others can be taken so having said that which essentially means understanding anatta i could have been i will put it in our normal so you can see the depth of understanding anatta बिल्कुल वो ये समझ आ रही है कि अगर कि अब यहाँ वो क्वालिफाई कर रहे हैं उस लिबरेटेड वन को जो डिस्क्रिप्शन ऑफ सेल्फ में नहीं फंस रहा है जी जी तो उसमें भी फिर स्टेज दो कैटेगरीज हैं उसमें भी लेवल्स हैं एंड यू नो इज अ वेरी स्ट्रॉन्ग स्टेटमेंट विच विच अपेरेंटली अप्राइज टू वेरी प्राइबली द चीफ डिसाइपल्स एंड हिमसेल्फ ओनली there is no other liberation in both ways higher or more sublime than this one this is the ultimate uh, description of the ultimate attainment a person can have it obviously applies to him to the buddha and probably it applies to um, i don't i'm not sure because sariputta didn't have apparently uh, immaterial attainments and uh, so the it's a, a very rare like kind of attainment which is maybe pachek buddha would have and maybe some chief disciple maybe mogalana or others might have sir what is this four immaterial things mean here Say it again. What what is this four immaterial mastery over four immaterial things? Jana, you know, four immaterial realms. So this is the various kinds of jhanas, you know, which which real the jhanas which one human being can practice, which if he doesn't have panya, we lead his rebirth in the immaterial realm. You know, this we had discussed when we talked about the thirty one realms. in brahma jala sutta so these are the uh, base of infinite space that is the kamathana and on that basis he uh, attains the fifth jana then infinite consciousness sixth jana base of nothingness emptiness seventh jana and then neither perception nor non perception the eighth jana that eighth attainment as it is called you know so this is not even in the word usually used is attainments mm. these have a different flavor of practice because the kamathana is immaterial in the lower realms kamathana is a material it could be breath it could be various kinds of shapes form kasinas or it could be things like light and so on so four immaterial attainments four jhanas which we are which are hopefully quite clear about there also it mentions about three kamathanas and commentaries mention that these three kamathanas pertain to attainment of because that's quite obvious that pertain to attainment of four jhanas <clears throat> so i'm not getting into discussion of that because the the wordings used there are of a, of a kind which may unnecessarily create confusion because there those wordings have to be extrapolated so professor dar these uh, uh, the higher jhanas fifth onwards are not absolutely necessary for liberation yeah liberation there is a exceptionally liberated person or a liberated person with exceptional attainments that's in that be better way <laughs> and in fact in our mm-hmm. common day uh, conversations we even say that uh, even the four jhanas may not be absolutely necessary as long as you have 
yeah reached a point where you can do some yeah uh, inside thinking inside this reflections is, this is clear in the definition of liberated one panya vimukta also it's mentioned okay. there is no mention of any jhana okay it's not mentioned at all it's essentially said clinging clinging has to be given up to everything and the way i inter- understood it is that because normally in the discussions in on panya vimukta the rupa raga and the rupa raga are rarely mentioned they are mentioned in the fetters and by pointing out these seven stations of consciousness he brings into purview rupa raga and that that also has to be contemplated for complete liberation Mm. you can you have to practice say give up clinging for the realm in which i work for say the human realms we are work on talking about so we have to practice so that the uh, clinging to this realm is finished but still residual clinging to higher realms may remain basically even yeah. when you are practicing non clinging uh, without attaining these jhanas yeah you must be you must be quite aware of these uh, realms yeah that is the point normally we think of them as extraneous ha uh. normally we think of that discussion as extraneous kya karna hai isko humko thodi na jana hai wahan pe ye to hamare domain mein hi nahi hai hum to jaan hi nahi karte okay jaan nahi karte but aapko uske bare mein soch reflection karna padega that's why i have uh, added this part ki wo karega kaise so i've written here for once instead of he have written she just to um the modern tendencies so the she doesn't have immate mastery or immaterial jhanas so wo directly to experientially to contemplate nahi kar pata kai baar hum kehte hain na experience se hi sab kuch hota hai to usne experience hi nahi kiya to kya karega uska no that's not true he can induction there is a method of induction that from the experience you can do you can derive gen, you can as particular ex- level of experience can be generalized so that's how the and it's clearly seen it's a very clearly mentioned that so so that's a that's a very important message actually for all of us that if you say oh they are used they get thinking about them is great uh, craving and forget about them don't think about them no that's not going to lead us to liberation you have to like now uh, i understand why in one of his suttas which i never could understand why all this is being said he actually makes these kinds of statements that the base of nothingness should in the base of uh, this thing should be known the base of this should be known yeah this should so he he talks about this knowledge being important and i never could understand why that is important i think now perhaps there is one particular sutta where he only talks about that these things should be known yeah so the whole idea as as generally people say buddha never teaches something which is not important he doesn't get into those which are not really related with cessation of suffering because talking of suffering and end of suffering so complete oh. end of suffering involves these giving up attachment to these stations of consciousness normally we avoid thinking about them leave aside practicing any jhana ye to usko padh ke bhi ek taraf kar deta tha because is stuff samajh nahi aata tha this stuff yeah but he is not mentioning you can see he, uh, this uh, point in the brackets i have written it's not a part of commentary it's not a part of bikhu bodhis this i have written and those realms which he can access based on our level of jhana this i have added to say that yeah uh, anand can have first second third jhana and uh, then when he has uh, anand as that jhana then he can easily directly experience what is the uh, great brahma realm and so on so and he can give up that he can understand the five aspects of that and give up that directly on the basis of direct experience but he doesn't have some direct experiences he may not have any of these jhana then still he has to contemplate on those realms so as to give up rupa raga and arupa raga we can put it like that that simple word in the fetters called rupa raga there's kama raga rupa raga 
and arup raga we just ignore arup raga and arup raga and they of course that's fine we can be still at the we are still trying to make a breakthrough but a fully liberated being is not one who doesn't have uh, understanding of those realms and given up the attachment to those realms in our minds also many times this thought comes that yes sansar to bahut hi bakwas hai yahan to dukh hi dukh hai chalo let us practice such an extent and at least we get we have a glimpse of the देव आर एल मैन एंजॉय समझे टाइम यहां तो बहुत सफर कर दिया ऐसा विचार आता है ना सो यू कैन सी देर इज अटेंट टेंडेंसी ऑफ यू नो गेटिंग अवे फ्रॉम दिस सफरिंग ऑफ दिस रेल बिकॉज ऑफ दी बिकॉज बोथ हैप्पीनेस सीम्स टू बी फ्लीटिंग एंड सफरिंग सीम्स टू बी लॉन्ग एंड ड्यूरिंग सो दीज थॉट डू कम देन यू टू कट इट आउट नो दैट वुड बी Yes, sugar-coated suffering for a long time, and then again you may end up in some lower realm also. So better work, better work for breakthrough here, and then after breakthrough you attain first jhana and get reborn in the deva realm. That is okay. There's seven realm births are left, but if you don't attain breakthrough and practice jhana and and get born there, you will be in trouble. In trouble meaning. the journey is extended further by thousands of years millions of years probably so in the context okay. of these discussions is there any significance of those seven births that a stream enter can take at the most yeah he is real we mentioned this even seven stages of consciousness no no seven seven births for a stream enter he will definitely yeah. attain enlightenment कंक्लूजन that even in the first or second stage of jhana uh, by development of panya one can get fully liberated yeah of course as i mentioned in panya vimutti jhanas are not mentioned by the buddha himself right so at our stage uh, of dhyana uh, or concentration yeah, if, mm. i think uh, priority of course dhyana is important but priority should be more toward panya yeah of course of course right priority should toward should be the first three factors should be seen through sakai ditti nichigicha shilabha paramas so that entry into the stream of into the zone of liberation takes place and then we can we are assured we will not get a lower birth and then one can work with full assurance because it doesn't mean that we start worrying about it all the time and then uh, defile our mind there is just a setting of the uh, Effort so that we don't relax our effort. अरे बहुत अच्छा ध्यान हो रहा है बहुत अच्छा शांति से रह रहे हैं और क्या चाहिए ऐसा महसूस होता है ना अभी जब हमने रिट्रीट की थी उसमें छठ पाँचवें छठे दिन तक सबको लोग बहुत अच्छा अच्छा लग रहा है इतना सुंदर है इतनी सुख महसूस हो रहा है पता ही नहीं चला क्यों है खुश क्यों हो रहे हैं और क्या चाहिए वन कैन गेट लॉस्ट बिकॉज दैट वॉज अप्रोचिंग फर्स्ट जहाँ ना we are even we are approaching we are only in upachar samadhi to if i were to put it at some word we are not at, i don't think we are attained jhana in the real sense or some one person had got some glimpse because it's totally silent mind for one hour or something but it's only the beginning so the taste of that itself shows how certain kind of uh, enchanting that is
So the first jhana is not something beyond our capability. It just needs effort, you know. Nikhil keeps on talking or reading about Dhamma Bhansa Anasutta, effort in them. So that's a good way of reflection. Uh, sir, how can I understand her knowledge is inductive rather than directive? Can you put it yeah. simplify? It means, for example, when we see one flower, see it arises and passes away. I'm, I'm giving a very trivial example. But no, this is be true of all flowers. We have not seen other flowers at all. But we intuitively know, yeah, this is the nature of this realm of existence. I'm just putting it for simplicity's sake, calling flower as a realm of existence. It's not technically true. The so, same knowledge one applies to one generalizes understanding that. other realms also yeah, or generalizing by, to understand yeah, by other by contemplation, realms. yeah, by contemplation of them, by okay. studying about them from the teachings of the Buddha, by understanding what are their special features. So once we study the properly the various jhanas, immaterial, material jhanas, at least them, so that we get a flair for what exactly is. And I would add, if we do some practice of concentration to such an extent, for example, I mentioned the example of the, of the retreat where people could attain a good level of peace and tranquility. So they get a flair, oh, this is what it means. And then if you can practice, for example, one day, I think in, in Brahmajala Sutta, one day we practice the Chul Sunyata Sutta of meditating on infinite space. So if you, if, I mean, we are not attained jhana, nowhere near it, but we have meditated on it and see, oh, this is what it means to be immaterial jhana. And this also ends. This gives you some level of equanimity, but... It's not sustainable. You can't eternally be in that jhana and live in this world. You have to be then in that realm. And if this realm leads to immateriality, what is the consequence of immateriality? We see in the table the lifespan there. So it means for those millions and billions of years, I'll be trapped in that realm and still susceptible to falling down to animal and lower realms. So this contemplation is sufficient for a vinyohi, for a wise person, to sh give up arup raga, arup raga, and contemplate, focus on the development of panya, so that he can make a breakthrough. You can, if you contemplate deeply, it becomes quite obvious that one can, and if you have, if you have even a fleeting glimpse of that, then you know, yeah, it's good, but it's seductive, but <laughs> There's a tendency to cling to it. The both the clinging hone lakti hai and then you don't feel like doing anything. Usi mein raho, bethe raho. One can easily verify that by just uh, in those 10 days one could verify it. How it clings and therefore for the next three days we broke that by reflecting on the four noble truths and reflecting on the three characteristics. I think that's the point more is uh, that we perhaps have some misunderstanding of the teaching that Everything is only possible through so-called direct experience. Now here, this sutta seems to be suggesting the opposite. He actually, uh, several aspects of liberation are possible, in fact, through only through uh, induction. I think, I think that's the point there. Yeah. The induction is a valid way of developing panya. <laughs> it 
it's it's a very big statement. He's talking about Panya Vimutta and the necessity of doing it, not just possibility, necessity of doing it. Because attaining immaterial uh, jhanas is not a is not easy. There may be very few people in the world today who have that level of uh, eight jhanas. Very few, handful. And the word he uses, I didn't put it here, probably I should have put, suffuses the body with these immaterial attainment. That's the level. Of course, in the description of the Ubato Bhaga Vimutta, that becomes very clear over the extent of mastery. It's not, a, it's not easy, it's not a, easily attainable. So you can't, you may not attain it. It doesn't mean that Arans would not be able to give up a Rupa Raga without attaining it. You can see these eight attainments again appear in many suttas in the same in the same way it is defined. So Ubhato Bhaga Vimutta is a very um, is the epic acme of the breath of the attainment in the Buddha's teachings. I think that should be enough. And any more questions? So we can. So, Professor, uh, jo, jahan pe aapne inductive knowledge ki baat ki hai, wo slide dikhayenge jara. Aayi wale. Ye pehli bullet hai. Is it from the sutta or is it from book of these notes? The it is impl implied in the sutta. It is from the book of these introduction. Okay. And one one sentence I have added, which I have put in brackets. Thank you. Because he's trying to explain na, ye hua kya? why is those seven stations have been mentioned for Panya Vimutta. It looks strange, no? Our understanding is uh, something else, you know, based on uh, the understanding of four noble truths, but means that it is implied in them. When he says craving should be abdicated, it seems craving is just one thing. You know, we usually take off craving, ek cheez hai. so ho gaya yaar, chhod diya. Abhi feeling jagi thi body pe dekha aur chhod diya, to craving khatam ho gaya. Haan, itni sadhana ho gaya ki ab see body sensation ke prati meri koi craving nahi hai. So I am approaching liberation. Oh no, there is a lot of things to be done. Uh, so, so, the danger, so the danger is while contemplating or um, uh, trying to understand other realms, we may put into a wrong view. End up with yeah, of course. That's why yeah. that's why it is mentioned so clearly. This is a part of Buddha. This is part of the sutta. I had put the sutta in somewhere. Yeah, here, this is the part of the sutta. Having understood as they really are. Origin, passing away, satisfaction, unsatisfactoriness, escape. These five things come repeatedly. Somewhere they come seven because all the four aspects of the noble truth are mentioned. But these five things come everywhere. 
that if one has to be liberated by non-clinging, this has to be done. Now, to what extent clinging has to be taken? That's again where we commit a, a kind of, we think we'll do a shortcut. We'll practice on uh, one particular own domain of feeling and get free. No, not want, it won't be. Escape in regard to these seven stations of consciousness. So he's expanding on the definition. He's giving the, because this teaching is on the depth of, <laughs> uh, the extent to which the teaching can go. So he's giving us the, thanks to Ananda, we're getting a peep into what actually it means to become an Arahant. Many people, one can easily get into a overestimation of one's uh, attainments. When he, one is not studied these things and not reflected on them, one can easily misunderstand that I am liberated. Clearly this is moving further away from us now, after this knowledge, after today's discussion. <laughs> no, it is talking of fully liberated, na, Arhant. That's the point, yeah. Hum kai bar, you know, casually kai dete hai, ye bikhu bhi arand hai, ye bhi arand hai. Maybe it is, I'm not saying they may not be. But then we must respect that attainment. If one, we, if we truly believe that this person is arand, we must respect that attainment, that the respect and gaurav which you should give to such a person, you can imagine what, what, a pers what a person has attained. So that increases our respect to the Sangha. It increases our respect to the Dhamma. We understand the teaching, my God. And of course, as a consequence, respect to the, Dhamma, the Buddha. So our devotion, our respect for the triple jumps increases enormously when you live. When you just listen to this kind of teachings. Because here it has been expanded, the teaching. You know, clinging to, in the second noble truth, he says, this is this, and I am, Tanaha, he says, Viragana so that's what we say. Tanha ko chhod diya, to mukt ho gaye. But tanha is not one tanha, it's not a one word. So much diversity in that. Kringling is not just one word as it seems. It has diversity and you can see the extent of diversity. One has to practice. Many a times, you know, we point out it's very simple and this, we are complicating it unnecessarily. So many people may be thinking in our group also, it's jabardasti amaru ko parishan kiya ja raha, complicate kar rahe cheezon ko. This ka hint vase sati pathan sut me mil jata hai, where he talks about craving at every sense door. Yeah, if you study maha sati pathan sutta, my God, it just blows you apart. 60 different kinds of cravings are mentioned. 60 different kinds of tanha are mentioned. We normally don't study Mahasati Patthana Sutta in its full detail. We don't really reflect on what does it mean, where the craving resides and where it has to be ended. Very clearly it is written there. Usme, that, jo 62, uh, 64 ki mentioned hai, so are these aspects also implied there in some way? Yeah, yeah. Those, are, those are further details of this. Because he's talking about each sense door now. In the realms where senses are there, Tanha is with respect to various sense realms. So when you say giving up uh, understanding the realm, it means understanding it fully. In the realm, there are cravings arising at... The six sense doors. So they have to be seen. I mean, there's further 
requirement to be done. So because sometimes otherwise we just do some one little part and it's up nap ho jayega, up nap ho jayega. Thank you. Sir, here seven stations of consciousness mean all those uh, 31 realms classified into, right, sir? Yeah, yeah. Yes. And and two uh, bases means the four jhana and four immaterial things. No, no, two bases are only those special special domains where the perception is not operating. That's all. Ah, okay. Base only is base of non-percipient being, you know, those zombie-like structure where there is no disturbance of thinking and mind is, you know, it's a, it's a warning. Uh, I, I, at least to me, it seemed like that, that if you think uh, end of the thinking is the end of liberation, you may end up there. And 500 eons that Venerable Subhuti recalls, 500 eons mujhe ek second, ek aisa laga ki soya aur jaga. Because it was not a virtually. There was no... Uh, it was in this realm. So Buddha tells him, yes, you are in that realm. So people try to... Other monks try to tell him, he's telling a lie. 500 realms are so pata hi nahi chala. 500 eons and so pata hi nahi chala. Then Buddha says, no, no, he was in the... In that Asani realm. In Asani realm, there is no consciousness that one is... One is, is uh, peace, of course. But what is... Who is experiencing peace when there is no consciousness? So that is the realm which he calls his base because that's not a station where consciousness exists. Similarly, the eighth jhana, consciousness is very... Because if there is no perception, there cannot be any consciousness because they are all tied up together. Vinyana is there, perception has to be there. If perception is not there, it means Vinyana is also not there. That's the kind of intimate relationship between the elements of Nama. Bhavna, bolo. Sir, these two types of two types have been talked about. Panya Vimutta and Ubha to Bhag Vimutta Arhat. So, the Panya Vimutta are liberated through wisdom. And the other type are both types used. Yeah, they are true. Of course, without liberation through wisdom, there is no possible liberation. What a necessity hai. In addition, he has the mastery over the immaterial jhanas. That is the additional feature. That's why he is called a two-tarake liberated person. And then, sir, it is said that what distinguishes them is their facility in serenity. Samadhi ka jo meditative attainment hai, usme difference hai because jhana ka unko additional. Oh, immaterial jhana, specifically. It's not, it is specifically mastery over immaterial jhana, which means 5, 6, 7, 8. Mm -hmm. Baki mastery on the form, in the uh, four jhanas can be there around also. In a normal aranth also, that much is there. But he, if, if he has all the mastery or all the remaining immaterial attainment, then he is called liberated by both the ways because he has a direct experience of the uh, five factors pertaining to each and every realm. That is the point. Because he said that by induction. कि मैंने दो दो रेल्म देख लिया है और क्योंकि वो रेल्म होंगे तो हैं तो सारे पतिचे समुद्रपाद के हिसाब से आ रहे हैं तो इसलिए वो भी उस, उनकी भी करैक्टरिस्टिक वही होगी जो और इसलिए उनके प्रति राग रखेंगे क्योंकि कोई अगर उस रेल्म में जाता तो इसलिए जाता कि उसका उस रेल्म के प्रति राग है एंड important cravings, higher fetters mein aati hai. Aur jo ubato bhag vimutta, he has actually experienced them and seen their origin, cessation, aswadan, adina, nisaran. Usme kya khatra hai, wo bhi jekh liya usne maha jake ki usme itni 
pleasant, blissful feelings hai ki one can get trapped in them. So he's seen it and therefore escaped from that by applying the proper wisdom of four noble truths. Okay, sir, got it. Thank you. Okay. Yes, Pai Sir, this second one liberated one. Yes. Yes. Emancipation in forward order in reverse order, I mean, what is this time about the time? No, no, no. It's about knowing. Emancipation has been used as a word in terms of they are free from the uh, those realms, uh, attachment to those realms. So they are free from that. And the specific characteristic of both ways is that he can attain the jhanas at will in any any way he wants. He goes from 5th jhana to 6th to 7th to 8th, then comes from 8th to 7th to 6th to 5th. If you remember the Brahma Jala Sutta, uh, sorry, Mahaparini Bana Sutta, which you had read, where Buddha passes away, he goes through that whole cycle in forward and reverse direction. Aniruddha keeps on telling Ananda, see, he is now in this realm, he's practicing first jhana, second jhana, third jhana, fourth jhana, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth. Then he's coming down, coming down, coming down. And then he goes from one, two, three, four. And at four, he gives up the, the life stream is cut off and the matter ends. It is exactly written there. If you, I, mean, I remember vividly, you can also check again. So that is what is meant, that you have such strong samadhi practice that you can attain at will any of jhana. Mahamogalana had that. Anuruddha had that. So sir, inka mane ye jhanas bhi koi bhi achieve kar sakte hain aur inka panya bhi puri developed hai. Aisa hai. Aisa hai. Bilkul, bilkul, bilkul. Ani se likha na? And and he here and now enters and dwells in the cankerless liberation of mind. Cankerless means defilementless. Uh -huh. Liberated by wisdom, having realized it for himself with direct knowledge, then he is called a bhikkhu and liberated in both the ways. But दूसरे वाले किन क्या नहीं होता knowledge होती है क्या नहीं होता उनका ये ये जो eight emancipation है ना in the Immaterial jhanas ki entry immaterial jhanas doesn't have mastery over the immaterial jhanas so you can't directly contemplate on the basis of experience about the five aspects of that plane of existence so he does it by induction to agar usne first jhana tak kiya to un do planes ka to wo dekh sakte hain uske aage phir wo they use the they use the a knowledge of dependent origination to see well, how does one get born. It is to the clinging that the next word birth, you know. Mm -hmm. We study that is in the Tanha Pachya Upada, Upada Pachya Bhava. Bhava is the existence and Bhava Pachya Jati. So Bhava is the, the Kamma Bhava, which means what is the kind of Kamma being created which will result in new birth. So the person who has, who has understood through this and studied the Buddha and known the Buddha's teachings about various realms and all that, then he can easily infer from whatever he has done that this is the same characteristic of other realms. And that the additional danger is that in those realms, the lifespan is very high. So you are bound in those realms for a very, very long time. So if I have to get liberated, let me give up the craving for all Rupa Raga and Rupa Raga, which means the craving for being born in the Brahma realm or being, bo being born in the immaterial realm. So that is the point being made. Yes, this Uvato uh, Bhagavimukta has direct experience of all of them, while the normal Arant has inferential experience, understanding of them. So that is the difference. 
ये जो स्लाइड नंबर ट्वेंटी थ्री थी इसमें ही शी करके हो रहा था कुछ हाँ क्या था ट्वेंटी थ्री By direct insight, she can contemplate the phenomena included in the direct experience of his realm. मतलब अगर हम मनुष्य realm में हैं, तो इस realm की तो सारी चीजें आप direct experience investigate कर सकते हैं ना? Origin, ending, gratification, drawback, escape. All these five factors have to be investigated for every realm. इस realm को तो मेरे को अनुभव है. I know how to what is happening in this realm, and I have the complete understanding of this realm. So I can I can direct from direct experience break away from this realms attachment to this realm escape from it. Certainly, if I have, for example, if Arant has first jana on the, then he mm -hmm. has he can directly reach a state of mind where mm -hmm. this is the kama bhava is corresponding to the Brahma realm, and then he can investigate the situation of that mind state and figure out can ye be. दुख का ही कारण बनेगा इसके प्रति अटैचमेंट होगी तो मनुष्य लोग के प्रति अटैचमेंट होगी तो सौ साल जीऊंगा वहां तो जाके दस हजार साल जीऊंगा कि एक लाख साल जीऊंगा तो सारा समय ऐसे ही निकल जाएगा वाई शुड आई सफर फर्दर दैट इज वाई शुड आई सफर फर्दर सफर इन देंस दैट द प्लेजेंट एक्सपीरियंस मे बी प्लेजेंट बट एट द अंडर करंट ही अंडरस्टैंड सो डीपली इफ आई मे यूज द वर्ड फ्रॉम दैट सत्ता दैट प्लेजेंट फीलिंग्स आर पेनफुल He knows that, and therefore he gives up the attachment to all other realms also, which he is not directly able to access. On the basis of understanding of how a person goes in that realm from dependent origination, and then understanding the dangers involved in that. Okay. हाँ जी सर तो इसका मतलब क्या ह्यूमन रेलम तो बेटर हुआ फॉर लिबरेशन ऊपर वाले रेलम से ह्यूमन रेलम तो ज़्यादा बेटर हुआ अगर आप वो मेरे को लगा कि ऊपर वाले रेलम में आपके पास प्रैक्टिस के लिए ज़्यादा टाइम मिल जाता है या मिल भी सकता है या इफ इफ ही हैव शोता पन्ना इन अ देवा रेलम देन ही हैज टाइम की दिक्कत होती है ना वी सी इन द नेक्स्ट होता है विचुअल स्टडी बुद्धा हिमसेल्फ एक्नॉलेजेस दैट या सक्का आते हैं तो कहे तुम्हारे पास तो टाइम निकाल के तुम आ रहे हो बहुत बड़ी बात है आदु आन सो द इन अनदर सुत्ता ही टेल्स यू नो इन द सेकंड सक्का ऑफ अन्ना सुत्ता ही सेल्स दैट यू नो वी आर स Devaloka and we are the masters of that, and I am the head of this. I have to take care of it, and there are constant fights with asuras. So kindly give me teaching in brief so that I can get fully liberated because he is already a sota panna. So Buddha gives him a very brief teaching, one line teaching, that whatsoever, nothing whatsoever in this world should be seen as me, mine, or myself. Sambe dhamma naalam abhinivesi. Says this is sufficient for you if you contemplate to get fully liberated, because it is clinging, which is essentially the source of rebirth. अच्छा सर मैं तो इस impression में थी जैसे जैसे ऊपर जाते जाते हैं वैसे वैसे issues कम होते जाएंगे जब body नहीं रहेगी तो body related issue ही नहीं होगा तो yeah. मुझे लगा ऊपर तो 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 जाऊंगा हाँ बट ऊपर वाले रेल पे हो और बॉडी रिलेटेड संखार है माइंड तो है ना माइंड संखार आज इन द माइंड नॉट इन द बॉडी तो दे आर पार्ट ऑफ द स्ट्रीम ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस दे आर द इम्प्रेशन स्टोर्ड इन द स्टीर ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस बट द दो जार आर लाइंग डोरमेंट व्हेन पर्सन इज इन हाईएस्ट जाना दे आर लाइंग डोरमेंट � Bliss and peace 
that unwholesome mm-hmm. ten- sankharas will not get a chance to come up. The unwholesome sankharas come up when there are unpleasant experiences, which is the realm of human realm. That's why it is said, in the human realm, you can have the opportunity to handle both the raga and dosha. In the realm, there is no possibility to handle the dosha. Because the dosha will not go away. In the realm, it will be a little bit of a dosha that I will die. Otherwise, the realm is full of pleasant situations, a peaceful situation, depending on which realm you are talking about. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Anybody else? So, maybe, maybe I can check. It looks to me that the first section tha, and, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'll take us back to first principles. The first section was our dependent origination. Yes. There were all things that were fine. The most important aspect of it नाम रूप विज्ञान वाला है दैट बिकेम क्वाइट अपेरेंट और उसका जो एसेंस था वो ये है कि वो सब साथ आ रहे हैं अंटिल फीलिंग सो सो दैट वाज क्वाइट क्लियर आफ्टर दैट जो तीन सेक्शन सेल्फ के आए इट सीम्ड टू मी दैट दे आर मेयरली रिपीटिंग द इनहेरेंट एजम्पन ऑफ सेक्शन वन विच इज दैट इट्स अ प्रोसेस एंड देर इज नो सेल्फ Yeah, is demonstrating it by specific examples now. Specific examples of the various ways in which we can create self in a very subtle ways. And especially the the third way there, you know, I am not the feelings, but the knower of the feelings, which looks so potent and so correct. logically and that has been the basis of most of the vedic uh, vedantic uh, conceptions about the nature of self so he wanted to probably since ananda wants detailed exposition so he is relating that pratichya samutpad there also that the and therefore that he talks of non descriptions of self first he talks of descriptions of self significance of self and then he talks of considerations of self and then he talks of non descriptions like these kind of things which people tend to do they will bind people because in other places i know what will be the consequence of that if you hold this particular view that particular view so as a additional input because uh, people may have various views which seem very logical rational and based on experience meditative experience since ananda is, is still a shota panna and he may because he has good meditation so he may understand get into that kind of a, i mean he shouldn't get into but probably to preclude all possibilities and probably for the posteriority because many a time the teachings are also expanded so that it is valid for so many other people theek hai so aur aur wahan pe ye inherent hai ki kyunki dependent origination nahi clear hota hai isliye is prakar ki galtiyan hoti hai yeah ki agar ye dependent origination clear nahi hoga to is chakkar mein phas jaoge aur clear ho jayega to koi self ki baat hi nahi hogi koi question hi nahi karega tathagat ji ji marne ke baad kya hota hai ye wo koi baat hi nahi hogi and then he comes this so he is moving from that to the liberated ones and then he talks of liberated ones may be category hai wo oh, then he talks of this uh, what we have discussed in the morning today so iska dependent origination se kya sambandh hua phir iska sambandh hai in terms of origin and ending i had shown that na five ways of reflection on planes of existence अगर एक अरहंत है जिसको ध्यान है ही नहीं और इमटेरियल तो है ही नहीं और दूसरे ध्यान भी नहीं है हाउ विल ही गिव अप द अटैचमेंट टू रूप रूप आर एल आई मीन फाइन मटेरियल रैम एंड इमटेरियल रैम हाउ कैन ही गिव अप अनलेस ही अंडरस्टैंड हाउ डज वन गेट इन टू दैट 
what is the origin and what is the cessation there. He has to understand that. So he understands first of his realm and then extrapolates to the other realm. That same phenomena is happening. Dependent origination is uh, neutral to whatever realm you are talking. And therefore, origin and ending is the aspect of dependent origination. Gratification, drawback and escape are the generally, I mean, this is how commentary is described, but you can see there also dependent origination is there. In understanding of the um, gratification, understanding of the drawback, so, and escape, especially the escape, the it is through de, uh, understanding dependent origination by developing the eightfold path thoroughly, developing panya thoroughly, and then only you can escape from there. And developing panya thoroughly includes dependent origination. Yeah, no, that's fine. I'm trying to relate it to the first four sections. Yeah. Now, four sections tak to aage, ke dependent origination saaf nahi hai. Isi liye wo us tarah ke self wali baatein aati hain. Aur jisko saaf hai, wo uh, not conceptions of self mein aage. Wahan tak to thik hai. Aur jisko saaf hai, wo kya hota hai? Wo yaha description diya gaya. Kyunki humko kai baar jaise subhi maine kaha tha. We take uh, craving tanha as a one, uh, one entity. We don't realize tanha is so vast. Just in here, it's in a realm. Ke prati tanha batai gai. Similarly, with respect to all six sense doors, sense objects, with the sense consciousness, you know, these these are all there. But probably, obviously, Ananda knows all that. So the, he has he has been a witness to these Sati Patan Sutta exposition. So he knows all that. And therefore, what may not have been explained till now is being explained. That Panya Vimutti and Ubuto Bhagavamutti is only in very few suttas is being mentioned. So the details of Panya Vimutti are being put out here. Because normally we talk about, you know, in for example, in Anatta Lakhan Sutta and all that, we only talk about the six sense doors or five um, khandas. We don't talk about realm attachment at all. Isn't it? So here, because Arhant has to go not only from the lower fetters, but all higher fetters. And two of them, first two of them are Rup Raga and Arup Raga. It is presumed that uh, the five khanda practice will also when you have dependent origination is clear, then you understand the other, you are able to abdicate or give up the other ragas also. I see. So, this so is... This is not explicitly come out in any many suttas. I think one or two suttas only, this detail of Panya Vimutti comes out. They are only says liberated by Panya, that runs. Most of the time they say. And... Liberated in both ways is by Panya and having some eight emancipation. Eight emancipation is about Kaija Yeah. So, in the case of 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 the case the case of the case of the But there is an additional refinement now in terms yeah. of immaterial jhanas. Yeah. So that there is a direct experience of that and not an inferential ex conclusion. And that has its own value probably. But also it looks to me ki is ka ek aur ahem aspect ye hai ki jo panya विमुक्त है उसका डिपेंडेंट ओरिजिनेशन की पेनिट्रेशन इस प्रकार की है कि रूप राग रूप राग को भी उसने पकड़ लिया या बिकॉज़ द व्हेन यू हैव अंडरस्टूड द तना पच्य उपादान उपादान पच्य भाव एंड भाव इज अंडरस्टूड एज एग्जिस्टेंस इन वेरियस रेल्म्स देन बिकॉज़ देयर इट इज डिफाइंड इन दैट मैनर देन द 
uh, it becomes a complete exposition so to say especially because he or she has not actually experienced it yeah that's the part that it seems some uh, because what is bringing out ke aisa nahi hai ki aap experience karoge to hi wo cheez clear ho sakti hai yes yes panya ki strength ye hai ki wo deduction se usko yeah clear kar raha hai kar rahe hain usko dependent origination bilkul clear hai so he understand because dependent origination mein aata na one can get bhava can be in different realms kama bhava roop bhava roop bhava so that to that extent agar dependent origination samajh mein aa gaya hai so then you can deduce also by analyzing as a direct experience you have of the realm in which you are and then others can be deduced by contemplation and in uh, so part of what's called induction generalization of that experience ऐसी सो जो भावना ने पहले हमें जैसे भाव बताए थे सो सो ऑल दो थ्री कैटेगरीज हैव टू बी क्लियर्ड या या दैट्स व्हाट इज बीइंग मेंशन हियर नाउ जो शुरू में बात हुई थी वो यहां बताए जा रहे हैं कि कौन सी कैटेगरीज है सेवन स्टेशंस ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस एंड टू दैट्स व्हाट इज मेंशन दैट द होल आईडिया ऑफ दैट उनके प्रति वहां तक जाने की जरूरत ही नहीं आनी चाहिए उपादान नहीं होना चाहिए किसी भी चीज से उपादान कहाँ होता है इसलिए वो डिटेल दे दी गई कि भाई यहाँ यहाँ उपादान हो सकता है आप चेक कर लीजिए क्योंकि उपादान की भी बहुत कैटेगरीज है ना so this is a comprehensive exposition of where the bhav can happen and where therefore bhav happens means we have attachment to that we are clinging to that so it is a result of clinging to various jhanas basically it means that because jhanas create the uh, condition for existence in the rupa bhumi or a rupa bhumi yeah what i can't get my head around is if that person has no experience of jhan then where is the question of attachment to that no because you just keep on buddha's teachings mention about all that various realms you know, these the, the, the various realms are discussed so many times and he sees people from various realms coming and visiting buddha <laughs> he is told there sutta na yesterday one deva came glorious this 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 and he said that and then there is a sutta of that kind so obviously is aware there are glorious beings there are uh, powerful beings of various realms and man can get easily um, attracted to that kind of existence and he knows that in the this realm suffering is not there very little it's all bliss so when we get easily carried away in that that's, that's not the question agar farz kariye koi usko anubhav nahi hai let me complete that's the point so usko anubhav nahi hai but usko theoretical understanding hai aur usne aise logon ko bare mein suna hai bhagwan se directly he has heard from buddha i mean we for us it is heard from this learned from the suttas I mean, I was talking about those people around him. So, for us, we have written, seen. There is a whole Devata Samyutta. They are all coming, and you know, everywhere it is said they irradiated the whole Jat Jetavana. In Sakka Panna Sutta says these Sakka came along with his retinue, and it seemed whole uh, mountain is on fire. So, gang walo ko laga ki sara mountain me aag lag gayi hai. So, these are the kind of descriptions which are available. So to mention point, about the radiance and the glory of these beings in those realms. So one can easily get uh, attracted. Yeah, we we too just a little enjoy. Look at it. I see. So you are saying that that is an inalienable part of 
the tanhas yeah that's uh, the right. bhavs that's right jo 60 tanha wahan aate hain mahasati pathan mein unme ye baithe hue hain that means somewhere mein is tarah ki wordings mein nahi hai is tarah ke categorization mein nahi hai but well, clearly hmm. agar nivrano mein aa raha hai then obviously somehow it is it is there isn't it yeah in, in term implicit so hai explicit event it's not explicit in when you talk of uh, kamachanda kam kamachanda means attachment to all sensory pleasures and various realms have attachment to various levels of feelings chaliye maybe i'll look at some more text and then in the next few days can continue this line of questioning yeah, thank you ji सर मेरा एक क्वेश्चन और है एट इमेंसिपेशन से रिलेटेड सर आपने बताया था बट मे बी आई थिंक आई डिड नॉट अंडरस्टैंड इट कम्प्लीटली तो आई एम आस्किंग इट अगेन तो सर ये जो इसमें लिखा है इंट्रोडक्शन वाले में इसमें ऐसा लिखा है दी इमेंसिपेशन इंक्लूड दी नाइन सक्सेसिव अटेनमेंट्स Four jhanas, the four immaterial attainments, and the cessation of perception and feeling. Yeah, that's what I had shown in this slide, na. So, sir, when four jhanas ki baat kar rahe hain, or four immaterial attainments ki baat kar rahe hain, to in dono mein kya difference hai? Four jhanas are pertaining to rupa bhumi. Immaterial attainments pertain to arupa bhumi. So there are different categorization, different levels of experience, different certain level of. refinement in the experience to matlab sir four immaterial jhanas kyun nahi bola four immaterial attainment kyun bola yeah attainments bola jata jhana nahi bola jata unko i don't know why but okay. probably the jhanas are within the domain of uh, uh, rupa bhumi hmm okay aur sir ye generally, generally unko i mean loosely people talk of eight jhanas but in mm-hmm. most of the sutta that they are mentioned as attainments or is cessation of perception and feeling I, i have a feeling i can just give you a hypothesis okay hypothesis is that samma samadhi includes these jhanas okay definition of samma samadhi is jhanas so therefore for the within the domain of Eight fold path. This these jhanas fall within the domain of eight fold path. So they are of a they are therefore called jhanas. What is outside eight fold path is called attainment. Maybe maybe that's the reason. I'm just giving a hypothesis. Ah, uh, okay, sir. So, मतलब ये चार रूप भूमि हो गए, चार रूप भूमि. जाति उसके बाद ऑटोमेटिकली सेसेशन ऑफ परसेप्शन फीलिंग हो जाता है क्या वहां पे नहीं हो सकता वहां पे अटेनमेंट नहीं हो सकती बिकॉज फीलिंग्स ऑफ ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ फीलिंग्स कैन नॉट बी एक्सपीरियंस्ड ओनली मेंटल फीलिंग्स आर एक्सपीरियंस्ड फीलिंग्स परटेनिंग टू बॉडी कैन नॉट बी एक्सपीरियंस्ड देयर मे बी क्रेविंग फॉर देम इन दिस स्ट्रीम ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस मे बी दैट क्रेविंग मे बी स्टिल देयर so that is the difficulty sir matlab it's not that the in the jhanas you progressively reduce the defilement as a nahi a certain reduction in defilements happens at the stream entry level and with the uh, attainment of jhanas because the uh, purity of mind comes through panya not to sun not to jhana so that's the fundamental difference we have to understand keep in mind thank you 
फिर मतलब ये जो एट इमेंसीपेशन बोला गया है ना फिर इसमें लिखा है कि दी इमेंसीपेशन इंक्लूड फोर झानस फोर इमटेरियल अटेनमेंट एंड दिसन परसेप्शन एंड फीलिंग So there are actually nine things, yeah. Because cessation of perception and feeling is nirodha, which is freedom, which is uh, the complete uh, stoppage of the rebirth. This will happen only when panya is fully developed. This won't happen otherwise. Attainments and obviously jhanas. That's the way. That's why called the ninth jhana. Some people term it like that, just for sake of keeping the numbers intact. Be before that is the neither perception nor non-perception. So you can see from there it is cessation of perception. There it is almost ended, but it's not sure. Here it is complete cessation. That is the refinement. But for this purpose, the stream of consciousness has to be free from all attachments. Then only cessation will happen. And sir, if I say wisdom is equal to zero ignorance, would that be correct? Yeah, but what does it mean? What does ignorance mean? <laughs> it, it is being explained. Yeah. various ways by which you can understand that is being explained complete realization of dependent origination mastery of four noble truths uh, uh, experiential understanding of anicca dukkha na there are so many ways it is defined and in samadhi sutta so many different aspects are mentioned various links of dependent origination if you can penetrate into them that uh, they have a, a kind of uh, holographic nature one contains the other for uh, for removing one you will need to remove all others so that's a, that, that's what's in samadhi sutta venerable sariputta teaches sir i would just like to share uh, as in something which i found very useful in today's discussion to pehle jab rems ki baat ho rahi thi na तो मेरे को भी लगता था कि अच्छे कर्म करो अच्छे हायर रेल्स में होगा वो रेल में बहुत अच्छा है तो एक्चुअली आई हेड डेवलप्ड उपादान तो जब आज बात हो रही थी ना दैट क्लिक इन मी कि वो जब भी रेम्स की बात हो रही थी मेरे को हमेशा वही होता था कि अच्छा वो रेम बहुत अच्छा है उसमें जाना चाहिए तो नाउ आई एम एबल टू फाइंड इट वेरी रिलेटेबल गुड थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच so now we understand why you are writing she 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 everywhere ha huh? dharsa we detected that she has caught on to this yeah because sometimes uh, privately people mention it to me maine kaha ek bar main bhi kar leta hu kya bhar bhai hi likhte ho and because i don't have any organic experience but but again i have got very attached to it just by knowing ki acha usme bahut acha experience hota hai yeah so if you if you practice say rain first jhana and then see the immediately afterwards you practice uh, the khanda khandas the nature of khanda then you will get very clear understanding kya ho raha hai kis tarah wo arise aur pass away hote hain aur kis tarah usme ye this is the point of adinava na asadam adinava aur nisaran ka matlab yahi hai ki aapko aswadan aata hai maza aane lagta hai acha lagta hai priya lagta hai बट उस प्री में डेंजर देखना है तभी आप फ्री होंगे अगर प्री में डेंजर नहीं देखेंगे तो वहीं अटक जाएंगे उपादान हो जाएगा एंड यू विल बॉर्न इन दैट रेल कोरस्पॉन्डिंग टू दैट अटैचमेंट सो दैट्स वाई दीज फाइव डिफरेंट आस्पेक्ट्स नो आर सो इम्पॉर्टेंट फॉर एवरीबडी फॉर गेटिंग इन टू दीम ऑफ लिबरेशन in fact bhagwan's advice is that you go through each of the jhanas come out of it and then do vipassana or based on your experience there yeah because when we were reading parinibbana sutta i think ek do saal pehle pad rahe the to usme ye description tha to mujhe laga ye kya hai what is this going from one jhana to other then going from count down it looks like a play but obviously this has some implication in terms of 
in the whatever residual ensuring that there's no possibility of any kind would it also be associated professor there with uh, some of the powers that may accrue yeah. to people who have both these abilities yes yeah of course of course the psychic powers are a result of such kind of ability in jhana that's why buddha yeah, could we, we uh... studied that sutta you know where uh, the nandopananda um nagaraja who is, lives in the space somewhere he notices buddha going there <coughs> again and again and his disciples going there and he gets irritated he kya hai mazak mara rakha mar realm ke upar se chale jate and he challenges them and then buddha sends mahamogalana nobody else others also say anirudha ananda no <laughs> why does he send it becomes clear that he has the ability to enter into jhana like this because when he defeats him in all possible ways of psychic power then he applies his force to create such a strong uh, wind or such a strong kind of blow that a normal person would be blown off but he attains that at that very moment he attains jhana so his all sensory operators are stop shut so nothing can uh, affect him because he's not feeling any of them so and that's sutta mentions like in an instant he attained the jhanas and then the commentary says that is the reason buddha didn't allow aniruddha and others to go because they are aniruddha also had get mastery over jhanas but not to that extent that within a second you can attain jhana so that's the and that's what i understood from this you know going up and down and whichever jhana and in the uto vimutta is mentioned also some of the abhinyas uh, may be possible only if you yeah they are go through this a direct result of such kind of abilities in forward order reverse order both forward and reverse order when he attains them and emerges from them whenever he wants in whatever way he wants as long as he wants this is a phenomenal mastery okay dr anurag